fooled adults for over 60 years. How would you like to become a psychic spy? You could go anywhere, anytime, and meet anyone you want. Cleopatra on the Nile, Mel Gibson on the set. The CIA claimed they could do it. Now a controversial psychologist claims he can do it too. Not only that, he can teach you how, through a psychic technique called remote viewing. For 20 years, our own military funded a secret program to develop psychic spies, agents who could project their conscious mind behind enemy lines. When the Reagan administration set sights on outlaw President Muammar Gaddafi, these psychics were consulted to pinpoint his whereabouts. The Defense Intelligence Agency called their program Stargate, and their psychics were known as remote viewers. These viewers would use pen and paper and a form of automatic writing to produce psychic impressions of activities any place in the world. While the degree of accuracy involved made it far from a sure thing, the fact that they claim to have consistently tested at a percentage above chance makes remote viewing one of the most intriguing phenomenon in the realm of the paranormal. Just what are these psychic experiments that kept our government so intrigued that they funded them for 20 years? Many people still find them so fascinating that they are being conducted in private workshops around the country today. Here in Sausalito, California, a remote viewing workshop is being presented by Dr. Wayne Carr. We're ready to proceed now. Carr is a licensed psychologist who has been trained in the same remote viewing techniques used by the military. His class is made up of those who, like Carr, are fascinated by the phenomenon and wish to utilize remote viewing in practical ways in their own lives. Terry Veramontes is a hairdresser, Dr. Deanna Dare is a teacher and counselor, and Mark Hall is a firefighter who has spent years developing his remote viewing technique. Take your pen and probe that and tell Dr. Carr teaches the group a variety of concentration exercises ways to mentally free associate that, according to Carr, can stimulate a natural psychic ability we all possess. The objective of the class is to identify a photo inside a sealed envelope. If successful, a significant accomplishment. Okay. Let yourself have fun with this. The participants sketch drawings and jot down descriptive words that come to them in flashes of inspiration. Ideas, abstractions, concepts, put them down. The information being gathered seems to be cryptic and contrary. One person perceives something soft, while his neighbor picks up on something cold. It's the job of the tasker, or group leader, to help interpret the data. So she's got a structure that's in a circle, a circular structure. And give me your top view. OK, here's the top view. What a coincidence. She's got another something in a circle. Amazingly, nearly everyone in the class draws at least one circle. I attempt the exercise myself and draw a circle too. Okay, he's got something top view, something that looks somewhat circular. It's a little squarish, but it's also circular. He's got a basic circle. And what kind of, what were you saying about this? Pe this people, at a, people at a sort of open grassy area. People in an open grassy area. Uh, this is exactly what this is, people in an open grassy area. And you even said near England or London, you said London. Hyde Park, London. Okay, when the target AOL, is finally so. revealed, the class is startled. Okay, here is the target. We got something in a grassy area with people looking at it that's round and it's a semicircle because it doesn't go all the way around. It's the target is Stonehenge. Here's my drawing. Now here's the target. The similarities are undeniable. Okay, here's the top view from John Eric. Not only did all of us seem to tune into Stonehenge, yes. Mark Hall actually wrote the word Stonehenge. Mark, uh, who is an experienced viewer, has been sitting off by himself. Uh, basically, he has actually named the target. OK, if, I want you to be able to zoom in on the word Stonehenge. This was most of our first attempt. We've never even heard of anything like this. And here we have a, a gentleman that sits over there with his little cap sitting back. He's a viewer. He's done this before. And on his first attempt, what we're just kind of like, just barely doing baby steps, he writes Stonehenge. I myself had picked up on a grassy field with a statue or monument near London. Was I remote viewing? Wayne Carr says yes. Psychologist Ray Hyman says no. At best, these remote viewers get about 15% of what they say correct. 
Well, it means that, that, that about 85% of what they say is wrong. Hyman was hired by the United States government to review the 20-year remote viewing research project. In a detailed report prepared for the Defense Intelligence Agency, Hyman concluded that the phenomenon of remote viewing was at best a noble failure and at worst an age-old mind-reading trick. Remote viewing, of course, is the same category as any kind of psychic reading, what we call cold reading. And you can get wonderful matches between any set of descriptions people make and a target. And if you don't realize the, the ways in which we can fool ourselves this way, it's, it's very compelling. How many people got circles from the top view? Raise your hand. But how do we explain the apparent success Dr. Carr's class had with the Stonehenge example? Five, six, seven, eight. If we look closely at the students' notes, the first thing we notice is that nobody, save one, drew or wrote the word Stonehenge. What they did draw were various shapes and squiggles. It's a specific step-by-step -step procedure full of sketches and probings and drawings. And by doing this over a period of time, you start getting more and more uh, in contact with the target and more of a stronger sense of presence at the target. But skeptics cite this vague aspect of remote viewing as its biggest weakness. One of the reasons why it seems so qualitatively compelling is because people can read into. This is called subjective validation. We can, once we believe that this is supposed to match that particular target, we will find all kinds of wonderful ways in which it does. Remember, the group leader or tasker knows what the target is. His viewers have been writing and drawing for an hour. At the end of the session, skeptics like Ray Hyman believe the tasker simply goes on a fishing trip, latching onto the pictures and descriptions that fit the target and conveniently discarding the rest. <laughs> okay, this is the what? This is the top view here. Okay. Anybody you get a sense of what this target is yet? But what about Mark Hall? He actually wrote the word Stonehenge. It's not vague and it's not interpretive. What about the fact that Mark named the target? Well, I uh, account for that. I would really like you to account for that. I, all I can say is, either it's a lucky hit or he's a plant. And I know that doesn't okay. sound, I, I know that doesn't sound nice, but in the business okay. of magic and, and the kinds of things we study, okay. these kinds of things happen all the time. Or so we could, have to be careful. So I would have had to been here at the start of that session to see, you know. Right. And so and maybe you not guys. scientific uh, control. Yeah, maybe you guys, you know, you told them what it was. How do I know? To give this phenomenon a fair chance, these remote viewers have agreed to participate in a controlled test. This time, we will pick the target. If these viewers really have the power of second sight, we're about to witness something extraordinary. Coming up, did Nostradamus foresee the rise of Hitler? The predictions on Hitler are very famous because he had an anagram that was almost an exact spelling of the name. And next, can these psychic viewers see what's inside a sealed envelope? Here is uh, Beverly's first sketch here. She's got something, she's got circles. We've been exploring the phenomenon of remote viewing the supposed ability of psychics to obtain information from locations either hidden from them or at great distances. We've seen these remote viewers' apparent ability to receive the details of a photograph hidden in a sealed envelope. But to make our own determination of the accuracy of remote viewing, two of Dr. Wayne Carr's more successful viewers have agreed to a controlled test. We've sealed a target in an envelope like this. No one has any idea what picture we've chosen. Let's see how well our remote viewers do. Tonight we have a uh, special remote viewing demonstration. Remote viewer Mark Hall is joined by Beverly Marcotte. Beverly's target contact success rate is considered one of the best in the field. The sealed target sits on this podium for nearly an hour. The two viewers draw and write, then signal when they are finished. Dr. Carr wanted us to make it clear that my very presence as a skeptic administering the test could create a dampening effect on target contact. 
Before I reveal the target, the remote viewers summarize what they saw. I saw a structure that it was cylindrical along and almost like, I almost had a feeling like there was like this turning motion, almost um, possibly one structure moving inside of another. I deducted something like a Ferris wheel. Well, I saw it was either like a caisson or a horse-drawn carriage or something. I thought maybe somebody passed away or maybe it symbolized a a crossing because it was going over a river. The target is still sealed. Before it's open, Dr. Carr looks through both Mark and Beverly's drawings and sums up what they remote viewed. She deducted a Chinese wall, rocket, oil drum, cement mixer, a deduction of Teddy Roosevelt, a fan tail jet engine, and again he's got some kind of conveyance. It could be a carriage, an automobile. Well you You've thrown out about 30 or 40 different things, so it seems like almost no matter what it is, you can say, well, number 17 is the one that I said it was, so there it is. So <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of all this, other than when I selected the target, um, I purposely chose something that wasn't a box or a circle, because that's what you guys always draw, uh -huh. box, boxes and circles. You said on your webpage that you've uh, remote viewed galaxies, so I have the most famous picture ever taken of galaxies. Uh, and here it is, and that was the target. The photo is a shot taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in Earth orbit. Well, this is an intriguing target, and it's certainly not the most easy target because it is, certainly puts you in an area where you really don't recognize what's going on. Dr. Carr utilizes Mark and Beverly's notes and sketches to argue that the results are a success. Here is uh, Beverly's first sketch here. She's got something, she's got circles, and, uh, and some arrow is going in a rotating motion. So to me, and I think to most people, that this is um, basically uh, describing something that's in motion in a circular motion. So what is a galaxy? It's something in a circular motion. So is this above chance? Yes. No, no, no. Okay. Only if you tell us ahead of time it's a galaxy. Then I would be impressed. What only about this one? This if one there are only like nice four drawing. sketches. Well, how come you want to throw that one away? This is a nice drawing. Okay. It doesn't look at all like a Hubble telescope or a galaxy. I, okay, okay, I so give I you can that. But, if, it's, but if one of the four sketches describes something in a circular motion, that's pretty much above chance. Mark has probably about six sketches one of his sketches, he has, again, a circular structure, and he calls it a whirlpool of energy. So is Dr. Carr being generous? Perhaps. But one could interpret one of Beverly's impressions as the Hubble Space Telescope. It was cylindrical along, and almost like, I almost had a feeling like there was like this turning motion, almost um, possibly one structure moving inside of another. You really can't uh, judge remote viewing on the basis of uh, one demonstration alone or the results of one or two viewers, because uh, this is a thing that comes and goes. It's not a 100% deal, and any uh, researcher and remote viewer knows that. So what did our controlled test of remote viewing teach us? The accuracy of the phenomenon is at best subjective. But for those who choose to believe, remote viewing is an untapped ability we all possess. Coming up, is magnet therapy effective? The history of, of medicine is littered with the remains of therapies that millions of people once swore by. And did Nostradamus foresee the end of the world? There are always references to demons and kings and devils and such coming from the sky.